Yo guys, Simon B1471 checking in and today guys I've got a League of Legends video for you as you all know if you've been following me channel for some time um, I've grown more and more in love with this game now the title of the video today is saying how to escape ELO hell or something you know around you know that kind of genre now ELO hell a lot of people say ELO hell you know I can't get out of it blah de blah de blah now a lot of people um are in bronze for a reason there's nothing wrong with being in bronze you know it's just somewhere to well for the lack of a better phrase learn how the game works but then there's people who have got to the level like myself where okay I've played over a thousand games in bronze which I have um, and over maybe the last couple of weeks I've started to carry games for my team now the way I like to carry is by playing ADC um, I've tinkered with a lot of champs and throughout this video I'm going to be telling you my thoughts on you know how to actually carry a game with an ADC because since some of the more recent patches they've been kind of trying to make it that ADCs can carry instead of you know the AP carries in mid or you know overpowered um, offensive junglers but yeah the recent patches have kind of favoured the ADCs and we've seen changes to the bloodthirster things like that but anyway let's get down to exactly what I want to talk about now how to carry as an ADC now for me my favourite champ to carry with at this moment in patch 4.13 is Misfortune now the reason I like playing Misfortune is early game she is quite powerful I wouldn't say she's overpowered early game mid game is where MF shines now the thinking behind me playing somebody like Misfortune is that I've got great poke with my Q now I'm gonna assume guys that you know enough about Misfortune to know what I'm talking about I'm not gonna explain her abilities or anything like that um, maybe come back to the video after watching somebody else's guide so I like to poke them down with a Q because a lot of people in bronze will just stand behind their minions and just think well MF can't hit me but yeah I can because that's how my Q works I hit a minion and then it will bounce off and cause I believe 115% of my total AD on them so that's a good way how to poke down but unfortunately, the beginning of this game, I'm getting a bit stressed out with Morgana. I don't know why, but at that particular time, I was frustrated that I was being poked down by Caitlyn, which, early game, Caitlyn, one of those champs, very hard to lean against. Now, how to carry. Basically, you've got to play in a manner that allows you to poke them down, or a manner where it actually suits your champion you've picked. So, I've picked MF, okay, I want to poke, but I've got strong all-in potential as well if Morgana manages to land her dark binding. Now, farm is key. The amount of times I've seen low elo where people are chasing through the jungle, um, trying to get, you know, that one kill, and then they run into an ambush, you know, don't do that. Don't do it. If they're running away from you and there's no way you can get to them, don't even try chasing them, just either go back to pushing the bot lane or try to do an objective like Dragon. The amount of times I see junglers in bronze not doing a Dragon is unbelievable because it's like at max level you get 280 gold for a Dragon. You know, times that by five people on your team, it's a lot of money. So the ADC is the best role to play in my opinion and there's two reasons for this. Number one most times everybody in low elo wants to have a solo lane so they'll either want to go mid they want to go top or they want to go jungle those are the three most popular lanes now if you get good at either playing support but especially an adc role you're going to be specialized playing that role and then the other team whoever ends up picking the adc role might not even be that good in that role so therefore straight away if you're better than them to begin with and you're watching this video because you're having problems winning you are already got the upper hand because you know that you're good mechanically and you know how to play the particular champ you've played because you've played them enough times you know to be comfortable on them and that is another big thing if you're picking a champion in ranked and you've not made probably played more than 50 games with them in ranked 
doesn't matter in normals or bots, you don't get real experience in those game modes. But if you've picked a champion who you've played more than 50 games with, I'd class that as you're, you know, comfortable with them. Like Caitlyn there, she just stands, takes poke off my Q. Unfortunately, we have this a few times in this lane, um, where we just can't get, you know, that one last hit. Morgana can't really land a Q, unfortunately, but, you know, we're winning the lane at the moment. So, yeah, if you start to main a role what can carry and other people don't really like playing that role because they like having a solo lane the ADC role is ideal for that because if you want to main mid yeah that's fine main mid but you're going to be coming across other players who main mid as well so then the skill level between you both isn't going to be as much even if you do believe that you're in a lower elo than what you deserve maybe they're mid feels the same way because there are the roles what always get picked first you get mid top and jungle they're always the three main roles what people like to pick because they're solo lanes and they're not relying on somebody either troll picking a support or somebody just you know just being a complete and utterly useless support champion now the second thing is in low elo what i don't see and that is people farming Last hitting is just so important. The majority of your gold income throughout the game comes from last hitting. Okay? So you need to make sure that you're doing as like you're proper concentrating and triarding on last hitting. If you're not getting maybe say in an ideal world, you know, if there's nothing else really happening in the game and the lane's being played pretty safely and you've just been allowed to farm freely, you, you're at least going to need to be hitting 80 CS by the 10 minute mark. That That is what I'd class as good. You see pro players may be going 100, 110 in 10 minutes and obviously they're pros. But there's also other things you need to take into consideration while last hitting. If you can manage to get a last hit on their ADC while you're still farming, do it. You can poke them down very slowly. And especially with a Morgana lane or even a Leona lane, you've got that all in potential once you've you know put them down to low health. Like Alistair is on low health, he runs away, and I'm like, right, okay, if we get another opportunity, I can use me ult, and then we've got a kill. And throughout this game, you know, it's pretty slow at the moment. I've really not got any kills, but at the end of the game, you know, I've absolutely destroyed them. And at this part of the game now, it's all about just setting up for the late, well, for the mid game, because MF does fall down late game. I end up getting me ult off there. I know it's pretty safe to do so. I try to get a bit greedy now, but I get a double kill, you know? I don't know what Caitlyn was trying to do there. 2v1. To be fair to Morgana in this game, she's actually quite a good, you know, support, um, which makes a nice, refreshing change. So, if you want to get out of elo hell and there's a lot of arguments right why people say elo hell doesn't exist now one of these arguments is okay well if there's five morons on their team but if you're that good that you've only got four morons and you're a good player that you should be able to you know get out of elo hell however there's a lot of people who are better than their actual current elo but they're not that much better that they cannot carry games you know regular so, if you want to get out of ELOL, and that's your situation, and before anybody thinks, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's on about, I know there's a lot of videos out there of, like, diamond players, you know, um, gold even, you know, players who, you know, are better than what I am at the game, admittedly. However, I've got the experience where, at the moment, I'm in bronze three, but out of my last 20 games, I've won around 16 of them. Um, it has finally sunk into me as a bronze player what I was doing wrong and how I can actually get out of this hellhole which is bronze I've managed to do it nearly I'm moving up and to be fair guys the difference between bronze 5 and bronze 3 is probably zero difference you might not get as many trolls but all in all guys if you want to get out of elo hell there's a few things you've got to do, and I'm going to list them now for you, and then I'm going to talk about the gameplay, my decisions, and stuff like that. Now, to get out of Elo Hell, you need to main a role. Now, 
as I've explained earlier, main a role what other people don't like. So if you main the ADC role, there's no point you main in support because really it's hard to carry as support unless you've got an ADC who's got an idea of what they're doing. So if you main the ADC role, it's not a popular role, so the people who you're coming against are probably going to be, you know, nowhere near as good as what you are, you know, mechanically. So that gives you an advantage already, and then you've got the added advantage that you're a better player than what you think you are, maybe. <laughs> you might think you're better, but if you are better than their laney, you've got another advantage, okay? So it's going to give you that potential to snowball. And then once you've snowballed your lane, basically the game is won. Like, you'll see this game, I'm snowballing, Hermidinger's snowballing. You know, he's doing a great job. But then we've got Anassus, who is AFK, um, to balance it out. You know, you know our bronze is. And we finally win our lane here. Anassus isn't even stacking his Q, guys. You know, I think at the end of the game he's got six stacks in his Q. So, you know... We've managed to do this really kind of 4v5. So if you can do it 4v5, you can do it, you know, when you've got a full team. At the end of the video, by the way, guys, I'll show you my actual um, LOL King pages so you can just see the rapid progress I've made. And I'm not duo, duo bleh, can't get my words out. I'm not in a duo queue with anyone. This is me in solo queue, just playing, you know, how I want. And <laughs> you can see me typing in there, flame. Um, but yeah. This lane is pretty much won. Um, we all make mistakes, and I make a big mistake here. I, f I totally forget about Caitlyn's ult ultimate. Um, I don't really... <laughs> I don't know words can't describe, but when I see her ultimate come out, I think to myself, oh dear, that's a new mistake, which it was. You know, I shouldn't have been anywhere near that. Now, the game at the moment, you can see mid, you know, is all the way up to their turret. And I don't know what Lee Sin, Caitlyn, and Alistair are doing down on the bot lane. Yeah, they've destroyed a turret, which is good for their team. They've got an objective. However, a more important objective is going to be taken very shortly with Hermidinger. And that's another key fact. Always take the objectives. If there's a dragon up, you've got a chance to do it. Go and do it yourself. Ping your team, type something in the chat saying, come and help me. Because 9 times out of 10, your jungler just will not even bother. And this is probably one for the highlight reel here for me, I believe. Oh, no, it isn't. It's later on in the game. But, yeah, at this point in the game, you know, it's already won. It's already won. The only way we're going to lose this game is if I go AFK. Because I've got too much damage. Um, and, really, like I said, the only way we're going to lose this game is by me going AFK. Now, a bit about MF. A few little tricks that I've figured out with her. Before you use your ultimate, you want to use your W because then the active on that applies the on hit effects on your ultimate, which is always key. And guys, like I've said earlier on in the video, if you don't understand how MF's abilities and stuff like that works, please go and watch a build guide video and that'll help you out tremendously. Use me ult at the right time again. Get one kill. I get another kill on Lee Sin. And I believe Alistair goes away now. Tranamir is running away there on the right hand side of the screen. There's no point in going there because he's just going to take turret aggro. And this is what you need to do. Tech objectives. Right, I've took their blue. That's probably going to make their jungler rage go. Oh, I've got no blue. Even though their jungler is Lee Sin. And he doesn't really rely on the blue. Now, as I was saying... I'm here now, pinging the dragon for my team, you know, to take it. Nobody's kind of coming. Um, as you can see, they're trying to push the lane. I'm typing help. Nobody's coming to help me. You know, I'm going to die at this point. And thank God that Morgana comes. But the elf, well, the dragon's starting to respawn now. Well, gain health again. And then Trandomir comes along with no health. And I'm here thinking, what the hell is he doing? Just get away. And he ends up dying. We get the dragon, but a death there from Trandomir, which didn't need to happen if my team actually was more based on the objectives. Morgan is a good player. Trandomir wasn't the best jungler, however, for this elo, it was around average. But yeah, I've played over a thousand games in bronze. Um, like anybody else, you know, who's 
been hooked on League of Legends. I got into League of Legends through a friend telling me about it. Um, and now I'm at the point where I believe that I shouldn't be in bronze anymore. I should probably be uh, probably middle of silver or maybe low gold player. That's what I believe. Um, get an easy kill here um, on myself. They just, you know, outplayed us that way. Yeah, they just bluntly outplayed us. But we're at that point now where, like I've said earlier, there's no way on earth we should ever lose this game. Um, you know, I'm I'm fairly fed. I wouldn't say I'm over the top fed, but I'm five and two. Not as much CS as I wanted, but it's not been that kind of a game where I'm just sat in lane. You know, they're sat in lane, and it's just a battle of the farm. Now, regarding the builds, if I'm fed, I, I need doing. to go massive on the attack damage, especially. A good item for NF is the Infinity Edge because your Q applies the on-hit on hit passive. So I've got a chance of getting 250 crit strike with my Q. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what else there is to talk about, guys. It's just focus the squishes because if you're good enough to you know, say to yourselves that I'm in an ELO which I don't deserve to be in, I'm kind of taking it for granted, just getting another kill on Kadas in there. If if you're in ELO hell in your own terms, you should know to f obviously focus the carries first. So I don't really want to be telling people stuff where if you're watching this video, you should already know stuff like that. But yeah, always attack the carries first, attack high priority threats. So if one of their teams fed, um, you want to get rid of the fed carry first. So if they've got a mid laner who's maybe 10-0 and 0, and then they've got their ADC of 0-5, obviously you want to target the AP carry first. A lot of times I see, you know, people choose the wrong people in team fights to target and then we end up getting destroyed, even when I am fed. So here, Kassassin, Lee Singh come out, you know, try to stop us. We get the mid inhibitor and that is basically the start of the end of this game. Once I've got an inhibitor on mid, especially playing as an ADC, and nice little highlight reel double kill there, but yeah, once I've actually um, got an inhibitor, it's all about pushing for me, now, the thing with bronze is, you'll see people, you know, who will just be stood in mid, you know, standing off with each other where It'll be 5v5, they'll both be stood either side of their towers, and there'll be nothing happening. And then you'll just be getting little bits and pieces of farm as it comes through shed between all four of you, or five of you, including the support. Now, as an ADC, especially a fed ADC, you need to start pushing, because then it will mean that their team have to peel off from the mid lane to actually come and stop you pushing the top or the bottom lane. So then that will free up the space for your team, who are at mid, to take the mid. So it gives them a decision to make. They've either got to stay mid and protect the mid tower, or they've got to come and stop my push on top and bottom. Now that is one of the most important bits of information in this entire video. And if you've been you know, kind enough to stay around here for going on 19 minutes listening to me talk about strategies and things like that, well played guys, um, if you'd be kind enough to hit that like button or subscribe to my channel on YouTube, that'd be fantastic. I've also got a um, channel on Twitch TV as well, under the, under the same name, Simon B 1471 that would be fantastic. And as you can see here, the game's virtually over. If you want to add me on League of Legends, um, feel free to do so guys, I'm always looking for decent people to duo queue with. But like I said earlier on in the video, I don't really do OQ at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Add me on League of Legends. As you can see, my name there is I Love to ADC. And that's another little thing, guys. Because I've got the name I Love to ADC, people also see that in my team. And they'll think, well, if he's got a name like that, he's probably going to be good at that, that position. And it means that I can get the role I want a lot more often. And it also makes it that people pick support proactively. So they'll pick 
for first pick support because they know I'm going to be an ADC. And they believe that I'm going to be good at that role. So I get a lot more people picking Morgana, Leone, you know, people who are, well, basically good in the current meta, meta which is 4.13. I know 4.4. For, sorry, 4.14 is due to come out soon, but because the League of Legends World Championships are happening soon, there's probably not going to be any radical changes. Um, you see here, Caitlyn's got absolutely no idea what she's doing. She manages to get away. I die on Jax. I've kind of got a bit greedy. We could have ended the game there quite easily. Um, in some cases, you could kind of class that as you were throwing the game, but we're never going to throw the game. You know, I'm fed. Hermadinger's fed. Um... 22 minutes in and the game's virtually over um, but that's pretty much it for today guys and um, thanks for watching and um, if you've been watching the channel for a while big hello to you um, that's pretty much it the game's gonna end very shortly um, there's no point you watching all the way until the end you know it's just us one more push up mid and then that's the inhibitor gone so thanks for watching guys good like this video subscribe to me on YouTube that would be fantastic till next time guys look after yourselves bye for now